Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing great out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and a great week out there so far. Here to bring you the latest information that we have on multiple things in this morning's video. Of course, the first thing we'll talk about is the tropics. We'll go over all the model guidance from overnight into this morning. We'll go over the latest from the National Hurricane Center. And we'll just compare what these models are showing as we're still watching an area of interest in the Caribbean. Uh, model guidance has somewhat dropped off on it over the last 24 hours or just backed up the timeline. And I've mentioned many times before, delayed sometimes and oftentimes means denied in the weather world. You know, and whether we're tracking some sort of pattern change, something in the tropics, a lot of times the time frame keeps getting backed up uh, sometimes and even a lot of times it doesn't really end up unfolding but we're still watching the caribbean and we're going to speak on the latest on the tropics after we get done doing that i do want to spend some time on an active storm track not only unfolding right now across the middle of the country but it will likely continue into the weekend into the first several days of november this will bring Beneficial rains across the middle of the country, but it's also going to bring a risk of severe weather. So we'll speak on that also, spend some time there, and then we'll break down uh, what's going to happen weather-wise across the entire level 48 for your Tuesday. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put it in the comments below. You're probably wondering, why isn't the screen moving, Mitch? Well, it's glitching out a little bit on us, and it's throwing me off already. You see how you get a little glitch just having issues with the satellite right now. So we're not going to spend very long on this because I know this is probably making everybody go crazy. But this is the area we're watching right here. You see the blow ups in colors. This is shower and storm activity in the Caribbean. So this is kind of the area we are watching right here. And also, especially down here, is anything going to get going right now? There's nothing overly impressive, just a lot of tropical activity. So let's go on and just get away from this because the it's about to make my eyes go across there. But we're still watching this area of interest in uh, the Caribbean. Let's see if we have a new update for the National Hurricane Center. We do not. Still a 40% chance to develop sometime uh, for some sort of tropical development to form in this orange area sometime over the next seven days. So when uh, they say there's a 40% chance or any percent chance for something to develop, develop means into a depression or a name storm. Next name storm is Patty. You know, a lot of people's wording out there in the weather, uh, the weather YouTube community has been really bad. You know, they almost make it seem like we already have a hurricane out here. In fact, my wife asked me about two or three days ago, I think it was Sunday. She says, uh, whatever happened to that hurricane, uh, Patty? And I was like, honey, there, there is no tropical system out there. And it just goes to show you that even people twist up even what I say. And I don't think I've ever said we have Hurricane Patty out here. So I just think that people process information different than others. But guys, we don't even have a tropical cyclone out here. It's just an area of interest that we are watching. We still got a 40% chance of development. I could see this dropping. I, I don't really see this rising. So right now, still a medium chance. What about the GFS? What does it show for this morning? Well, I noticed in last night's runs, we started getting a significant drop off. I'll show you what I mean. We'll start off for tomorrow. We start to get into Halloween. Still just a lot of green down here. Nothing really developing. We get into Friday. We see an L pop off down here. Is that a tropical system finally developing? I'm not sure. We just got to continue to watch this area. We get into Saturday. We get into Sunday. We do have a, a tropical storm developing, sort of drifting uh, eastward through the Caribbean. We also have this kind of area of energy here that's been showing up time after time on all model guidance, but it does develop a hurricane really quick and moves it into Hispaniola. And, and folks, I, even though we're getting some back and forth with model guys, I really could see everything just all of a sudden getting aggressive again. We're just kind of in that windshield wiper time frame, And this does develop a hurricane sometime next Monday morning. Uh, the GFS does and makes landfall, you know, and, and, and yesterday morning's runs were showing this, but makes landfall into Hispaniola as a category one or so hurricane, moves it over uh, that area and then gets it, you know, into the Turks and Caicos Islands about a week from today. Still have a tropical storm right in here and just does some weird stuff, kind of throws a bunch of tropical energy, like in the seven to 10 day range in the Southeast Bahamas and you know, does try to get it close to the southeast coastline. But folks, this is so back and forth right now. It really is. The Euro, same thing. We'll start off tomorrow morning. We'll get into uh, Thursday morning. We'll get into Friday morning. We get into Wednesday. I'm sorry. We get into 
Yeah, Friday to Wednesday, that makes sense. We get into Friday and the Saturday, still just a week of low pressure down here, nothing really developing, and there's just lower pressure. I've, I've been saying that over and over again, just a lot of tropical activity, nothing too crazy at all. And we do get about a week from today, and there's still just a week low pressure down here, very broad, large low pressure, large area spin. And uh, we take it all the way to day 10. And it does begin to, whatever this is, it takes the opposite route as the GFS. So at day 10, we have a tropical system slowly developing like the evening of November 7th in the Northwest Caribbean. I can tell you right now, I'm going to be straight up with you like I always am. If we're still talk, talking about this by mid-November, man, it's going to be quite annoying. We're just, um, I, I said it yesterday on social media, on Twitter, I was like, I am done talking about the tropics. I think everybody can 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 speak for that. Uh, we're just we're just done. We're ready to move on to something else, and uh, we don't need any more tropical systems affecting anybody. But of course, we're not done with hurricane season, so we got to continue to talk about it. And we'll look at the G uh, the GEFS ensemble that's running right now. So it's the current run, and we'll start off Saturday morning. Yeah, this makes up 21 members. There's many members showing up here. We even have some members over here, some members down here. So there's still a sign for tropical development. Of course, the deeper we get into the weekend, the louder the signal gets. It's not that you have really many more members. It's just the fact that these members that do form get stronger. So by Sunday evening of this coming weekend, you know, we start to get some stronger members showing up. But does any members actually form? And then, you know, what's wild is the GEFS, the GFS ensemble is taking the opposite route as the operational run. So the operational run is wanting to kind of plow this through Hispaniola. Most of the members, especially the stronger members, the stronger members want to go into the Northwest Caribbean. We take this about 10 days out and then everything just gets kind of spread out and everywhere. The Euro Ensemble, I can tell you, it's, a, it's the same sort of deal. We take it about a week from today. And the members that do form are the ones drifting northwest. And here they are right here. And we take it about 10 days out. And, you know, we have some strong members in the northwest Caribbean trying to sneak closer to the Gulf of Mexico. So, folks, there's still a signal here. And it's not like I'm just going to stop talking about it. But, you know, we still got a lot to figure out. And I've been saying that for about a week now, which is wild. And I will say the sea surface temperatures down here in the Caribbean are still quite warm. You know, mid to upper 80s in Fahrenheit. Um, some areas just in the low 80s, but, you know, 29, 30 degrees Celsius is equivalent to about the mid 80s in Fahrenheit. So it's still plenty warm enough for tropical development down here, no doubt about it. So moving forward here, let's talk about the severe weather risk for tomorrow, and then we'll just kind of talk about the pattern in general. So uh, to, to tomorrow, for Wednesday, there's already a slight risk, level 2 out of 5 risk of severe weather per the Storm Prediction Center. This stretches from Dallas all the way up to just south of Des Moines, okay, uh, Kansas City, Topeka, I mean, Springfield, Joplin, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Fort Smith. Uh, you guys are all included in this, all the way down to Wichita Falls. Level 2 out of 5 risk, we have a, uh, a marginal risk in the dark green, level 1 out of 5 from Austin, Texas, all the way up to just about Madison, um, Wisconsin. Okay, what is this driven off of? Well, the tornado risk in that brown area, folks, that is where we have a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles into given location. By the way, this site is phenomenal, weatherwise.com. Type it in. Um, I've definitely been using it like crazy, and uh, they're just an awesome site that I've been working with. Them, them guys are really cool. Um, but uh, the brown area, that's a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in a given location. I mean, that's an appreciable threat of a tornado. In the green area, that's a 2% risk, okay? And then we look at the wind threat, pretty large wind threat, guys. This entire yellow area, 15% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. And then the hail threat, all right? The hail threat, you also have that 15% risk of hail exceeding, 15% um, risk of hail exceeding uh, one inch in diameter or larger, and then this area is a 5% risk of hail of same criteria. So uh, legit risk of severe weather tomorrow, no, no doubt about it. And if we look at the HRRR model, how this could potentially unfold, we'll start off tomorrow morning, and we keep this going here, and the low-level jet still around. And as we start to get into about 5 to 6 p.m., here are those storms forming in uh, eastern Kansas. How far west do these storms form in Oklahoma? It says in Oklahoma these storms don't really form until about 7 or 8 p.m., uh, but these look like pretty powerful storms. I mean, they kind of drape all the way down to Oklahoma City. 
Um, are any storms actually going to form around Dallas? A little bit of a cap. But by the time we're in the 10, 11 p.m. tomorrow night, a pretty decent line of storms. Strong to severe. I mean, this is starting to look more like springs. We're in fall, secondary severe weather season. So this is around 10 p.m. tomorrow. Look at these storms moving through eastern Oklahoma, moving out of eastern Kansas into the southwestern areas of uh, Missouri. These could have a damaging wind threat with them. And then we get all the way to about midnight. Tomorrow night, not tonight. Tomorrow night, these storms are starting to make their way into northwest Arkansas and still moving through areas of Missouri and southeast Oklahoma. And check out the storms forming into the middle of the night tomorrow night uh, in the north Texas. So we got to watch this, and we're gonna we're gonna look deeper into this um, over the next video. But if you look at the ingredients that's driving this, this is the low level jet tomorrow. So low level jet pushing 50 to 60 knots. So I mean. It's an interstate speed about a mile above our heads at the surface here across the plain. So it's whipping. You got that kinematic energy, that wind energy that supports severe weather. And you keep this going through all the way. And, you know, the low level jet does loosen up a little bit. You know, we start to get into tomorrow afternoon. But still, I mean, a 30 to 40 knot uh, low level jet is still supportive wind energy for these uh, storms. Uh, and even a tornado risk. So we still have that low-level jet there, plenty of wind energy, and definitely up here, you know, across the Midwest. And then you look at the low-level moisture. How is that going to be working with us with this? This is thermodynamic energy. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a dry line, certainly separating very dry air and very moist air. But, I mean, look at this moist air ahead of these storms in eastern Oklahoma, eastern Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and north Texas. Dew points well into the 60s. And this time of the year, that is well supportive enough for severe weather you know these storms they love that moist air and you can see the cold front dropping down but big surge of moist air at the surface right ahead of this cold front so check that off the box and because in response to this moist air and my bad i meant to look at this i thought i had a panel pulled up for it in response to that moist air we look at the cape levels and we move it forward here the cape levels you know already starting late tomorrow is already spiking to 10 uh, to 1,000 to 1,500 joules per kilogram, but we start to make it into like tomorrow night. We got this narrow corridor of Cape values from once again 1,000 to about 1,500 joules per kilogram mixed layer Cape. So you add that fuel in the atmosphere because of the moist air. And I mean, these storms that will be draping across this area will have some fuel out ahead of it to kind of munch off of, like, like Pac Man, for example. You know, these storms move in and then they kind of deplete the energy in the atmosphere. The wild thing is, is yes, there is a severe weather threat for Thursday too, I would say, but just a marginal risk for now. But as we move into the weekend, another big trough digs out west. This is starting Saturday afternoon out west. And you can see how this area right here is digging right in here. And if we can get this in motion, come on, work for me here. Pivotal weather is very finicky. And check out how that area digs down into the western U.S. And this is going to set up a lot of flow. I mean, there's already flow this weekend across this area, but especially as we get in early next week, here's this belt of mid-level, mid to upper level flow going right over the middle of the country again. So basically, you're, you're going to have you're going to have storm systems. That are, they're going to track sort of like this, okay? Little areas of energy, short waves, whatever you want to call it. And between this ridge, it continues just to anchor itself across the southeast. And the flow caused by the dip in the jet right here, the southwesterly flow, this is going to continuously pull in that moist air from the south and the Gulf of Mexico into the middle of the country. You aid that, you pull moist air up to these low pressures that will be kind of going across the middle of the country periodically next week. Um, you're going to set the stage for storm systems and, and severe weather on the warm side and then maybe some snow on the cold side. Uh, so, you know, we get this off your screen. We keep moving here. And uh, this will, you know, this is in the Tuesday of next week. This looks like a, and this is the Euro. Um, this looks like a pretty aggressive storm system right here. Check it out how that, you know, ejects across the middle of the country. And then we have to watch what happens after that. A little bit of a cutoff low starts to show up or begins to get cut off. And, uh, you know, the pattern can just get weird. But I think the weather is pretty active next week. Um, and more fall-like, I would say. Kind of where you get dips in the jet stream, stuff like that. And you look at the dew points, guys, moisture at the surface. Remember, dew points in the 60s or higher, certainly supportive enough for severe weather. And we keep this going here. Already in the Saturday evening, 
We got moist air bubbling up all the way into Kansas, getting into the dew, getting into 60s and dew points. I mean, and we're getting a pool of like 70 degree dew points down here in um, in uh, Texas. So we're getting a lot of moist air, folks. And then we're getting into uh, Sunday. Look at this big push of moist air. I mean, we're already. I mean, this is the first uh, couple days of November, folks, and we're getting dew points all the way into the 60s into Des Moines. And you can tell the lot of southerly flow is moving across the middle of the country. And then we get into Monday. Look at all this moist air. Dew points well into the 60s. It'll feel humid out there. I mean, you're already get, you're getting to a dew point of 60 all the way up into Minneapolis, Chicago. I mean, there's a lot of moist air. This tells me that we're going to have a huge moist sector. And uh, we're going to have an opportunity for severe weather across the middle of the country. And then we get in the next Tuesday. I mean, it hangs around. And then next Wednesday, you know, things get kind of strung out at this point, kind of gets flattened out, zonal. But I, I really think we're going to have some activity that we're going to need to watch next week. And if we look at the Cape levels, and this is starting off for Saturday, Cape's already building into Texas over 1,000 joules per kilogram. Um, you know, we start to get into Sunday. Look how it's building and surging north. Storm energy doesn't necessarily mean we'll get storms, but there's energy in the atmosphere for storms to form. We get into Monday and then we get into Tuesday and not a whole lot of fuel in the atmosphere, but this could uptrend. Kate normally uptrends. Also with the active storm track, you get obviously precipitation. So from the 3rd to the 7th, which is pretty much next week, six to ten day range of november well above average precipitation is predicted i mean it got just pretty much an 80 to 90 to 100 percent chance of above average precipitations through the middle of the country so this does good with the drought conditions that are getting pretty bad across the middle of the country i mean you got d3 d4 d5 droughts uh, d4 droughts across areas of north texas oklahoma it's getting very dry some of these areas have not seen much if any rain since barrel so you know i could click on every state now i'll click on this section right here um very dry you know we have anywhere from severe droughts to extreme to exceptional droughts across this area and um and then we'll move to the southern flank of this and uh yeah i know this is pretty small on your screen but i mean we have some d4 droughts i mean and, and i keep i think i've said d5 a couple times it only goes up to d4 uh but we um you know are an exceptional drought here in southwest texas but it's just getting dry in all these areas and you know i think some people want an update for the southeast this is the southeast but folks this is skewed a little bit the drought we are quickly entering drought conditions and even though like in my neck of the woods for example i live in lexington south carolina middle of the state uh we haven't had rain since hurricane helene which seemed like a lifetime ago uh some, to some people it might just seem like yesterday but to me it felt like forever ago we're now at day 32 without rain. We're likely going to go the entire month of October without rain for a lot of people, not just my location, but a lot of people, which is insane. I've never, I'm trying to think of an entire month that we would just went without rain here in South Carolina. Um, but it looks like we are. Um, so as far as rainfall between now and the next 10 days, this isn't a forecast exactly, but it's an ensemble mean, which does pretty well. I mean, a clear signal for a lot of rain across the south central U.S., the Midwest, areas of the plains. And um, un unfortunately, you know, if I kind of look at the southeast, folks, this is rain potential between now and the next 10 days. It it's not looking good. Drought, this is, I I've been honking the horn at this for two weeks now, maybe longer. You know, I've had some comments say, Mitch, we don't need the rain. We don't need it. We don't need it. We do need the rain. Um, now, I will say there's a lot of people, there's a lot of houses with holes in it. They just have tarps over their houses. So in a way, you can view it as a, bl a blessing from God that we have not had rain because it would add insult to misery. But we do need some light rain or we're going to have some major issues with fires um, across the southeast. I know you're thinking the southeast isn't big for fires, but you could still get them, especially in the mountains. So, you know, we look at the Euro, Euro, Euro Ensemble, not good for rain across the southeast. A tenth of an inch of rain, I mean, that's not a forecast either. And then we look at the GFS Ensemble. It's the same deal. We're just, this is, this is not good. 
and we just need rain. We're struggling. And the blend of all models is even worse. The blend of all models, I mean, shows no rain over the next 10 days in some areas. So this is becoming an issue. I feel like it should be talked about a lot more. Maybe I'm making more of a big deal out of it than what it really is. But, man, we need, we need rain. As far as what's happening right now, as you can tell, all the energy is going around this portion of the country. It's a ridge of high pressure. There's nothing. It's not anything than that. There's nothing weird or odd about it. When we start to enter weak La Nina conditions, we get a dominant ridge across the southeast, which makes our winter basically winterless. And I'm going to hope and pray that somehow we can work around that this winter and we can get something for our folks in Georgia and the Carolinas and even up to Virginia that have just been completely ripped off winter for us winter weather fans. But anyways, we got a lot of energy surging across the Rockies. It's moving to the north and then it kind of comes a zonal across this area. So we're getting a big plume of rain moving out of lower Michigan into southern Ontario right now. A little bit of snow flurry activity. Robin says she got her first snow flurries of the season. Um, I think yesterday or the day before in uh, Vermont. So that's always awesome to hear about. I kind of have to live through you guys up in the northeast and the northern sections of the country. I'm a big winter weather fan that lives in South Carolina. So, of course, it's miserable in the winter for me. But uh, there's a lot of winter weather alerts across the Rockies, winter storm warnings. There's winter weather advisories. You got a lot of red flag warnings across the middle of the country for a lot of storm systems. I wouldn't say a lot, but multiple kind of weaker impulses of energy moving across the middle of the country. This is going to kick up the wind. That's very dry. So, High wind warnings, red flag warnings across these areas, etc. So as far as excessive rainfall, not a big deal today. That could start to change over the next couple of days, though. There is just less than a 5% risk, so nothing to worry about. Severe weather, level 1 out of 5 risk of severe weather. We have a marginal risk over the middle of the country. Uh, this stretches from areas of the Panhandle in North Texas, western Oklahoma, and right through the heart of Kansas and areas of Nebraska up into western Iowa. And, uh, you know, could get a weak tornado, could get some gusty winds and maybe some small hail. Not a huge deal, but we will speak on that here in a second. The southeast, a lucky soul could get a shower into eastern South Carolina. We could get more widespread activity along the northeast coastline and just inland of Florida. Uh, this could move into further set for the northern sections and western sections of uh, northern Florida. And uh, just could get some showers today along the Georgia, South Carolina, Northeast Florida coastline. But I, I wouldn't bet on anything here. Everybody else continues to be very dry and uh, just no impactful weather at all. Uh, this, the Northeast, a lot of energy will surge out of Canada. And by the time we get into this afternoon, this evening, if you like a rainy evening, you're going to get it across the Adirondacks, the Tokyo Plateau. This will be too warm for snow or anything like that, but definitely just a, a rainy kind of a push of moist um Kind of just a push of energy will move across interior New England. Not a big storm system at all. By the time we get into the evening, this will be moving into Vermont, New Hampshire, Western Mass. And by the time we get into after midnight, uh, the rain will push into western and southwestern Maine. And then we'll wake up tomorrow morning to just some shower drizzle activity in the state of Maine. Uh, so this will bring you know some appreciable rain overnight. Definitely will um, make everything wet, that's for sure. Uh uh, getting into uh, uh, this morning in the south central U.S., a little bit of moist air starting to already get pulled northward, so we might actually get some drizzle activity in north Texas, maybe southern Oklahoma throughout the afternoon. First initial low pressure ejects by the time we get into Wednesday morning. There's not a whole lot going on. It's when we wake up tomorrow morning. This is when we start to get a big push of moist air all the way up into the plains, so the return of rain begins tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to be super widespread, but we're definitely going to start to get some rain. We haven't got rain much, and we'll speak more on this tomorrow, but rain gets introduced back into the forecast for eastern Texas, eastern Oklahoma, after some people went several weeks without it. Uh, but the north central U.S., that energy will move um, out of lower Michigan, the Great Lakes region, and a new system emerges. As we get into this evening, rain and moisture will begin to overspread the Dakotas into northern Minnesota. And then we start to move into tomorrow morning. A little bit of cold air tries to catch up with this moisture. There's been some models teasing at a little bit of snow for Halloween across some of these areas. And we'll speak more on that here in the next video or two. But uh, energy will be shooting across the Dakotas um, overnight. Uh, 
storms will add up a little bit of rain and some cold air tries to move in across the rockies uh big storm system uh growing right now as we get into this afternoon we're gonna have some leftover snow showers across utah you know idaho and then the higher elevations of montana but man an all-out winter storm unfolds across wyoming uh snow could be heavy at times looking forward to seeing some videos this afternoon to this evening in this area and then some of this rain will begin to turn to snow in some of these higher elevations of the Black Hill Mountains or the Black Hills. I don't know if they call them the Black Hill Mountains, but you get what I'm saying. And then some of this energy will try to tag on down to the Rockies of Colorado. This will linger around. And then by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning, we could have a little bit of snow flying around in Denver. It's very possible. Um, some snow flying around in western Nebraska and just northern Colorado and southeastern sect Laramie. Could be getting some uh, Cheyenne, could be getting some light snow as this system sort of pulls out and cold air moves in. We'll watch for our next storm system there. But snowfall between now and the next 48 hours. Of course, Wyoming's a big state to see a lot of it. We'll, we'll kind of zoom into a couple areas. A lot of snow, especially with the higher elevations of Wyoming. But even those lower elevations could get a little bit. And then we look at uh, Colorado. Here's some snow for this area here. So we're going to continue to watch this area for sure. And uh, maybe a little bit of snow in Denver. It's very possible. So uh, as far as temperatures, folks, um, we're looking at a little bit of cooler air. One kind of last push of cooler air for the southeast and Virginia, the Carolinas, Georgia, the northeast, uh, just some 40s, some 50s, some cooler air. Uh, but a push, a big push of warmth for late October standards. I mean, somebody could get into the 80s, the low 80s in the Wisconsin southern areas of minnesota and then this area right here could definitely see some um very warm temperatures for sure and then the western u.s cold conditions across the rockies as just cold air begins to filter and that's all i got guys thank y'all for tuning in god bless all y'all and y'all have a wonderful tuesday